there! You, my friend, have made the great life choice to learn about user experience, also known as UX. UXers are on a never-ending mission to solve problems with user-focused solutions that are verified with real data from real users. You will soon be part of an elite team of sleuthers who investigate and defend what's best for users. Picture it, a foggy London street at twilight, your trusty notepad with you. You're on a search for truth with a capital T and you'll protect it with your life. Okay, not 100%, but you get the idea. But wait, before we get ahead of ourselves, what exactly is UX? Well, I am so darn happy you asked. At its core, UX is the study of user behavior, empathizing with and gathering data about a user's problem, and then helping to develop a solution to that problem that feels intuitive and easy to use. That's the true magic of great UX. When it's done well, you don't notice it, like driving a Tesla. But when it's not, well, have you ever had such a poor experience that you've never gone back to a business or used a product ever again? I cannot be the only person who raged out at American Airlines' automated phone menu. Ugh. Your job as a UXer is to ensure that such experiences don't happen to your users. UX success is powered by happy users, and to be a good UXer, you must put yourself in the user's shoes. And to get there, one of the core tenets of the UX mantra is validating. As UXers, it's our duty to validate all assumptions and preconceived ideas we may have about our users and how they will behave when using a product or service. We might think everyone wants exploding kittens when they click the order pizza button, but how do we know for sure? With testing and data, of course. In good time, you'll be an expert on all such things, but that at a high level is what UX is. So are you excited to make users smile? Let's look at why being a UXer makes a ton of sense. Users and consumers alike prove over time that they always favor usability and pleasurable experiences over painful ones. And they put their money where their mouth is. Companies lose money, even if they have a great product or service, when the UX on their website, app, or automatic phone system is hard to use. Now, for a fun fact, can you guess how many professional UXers there were in 1950? In 1990? It might surprise you. In 1950, there were just 10. Yep, 10 UXers. In 1990, it was in the mid-thousands. Now, there are roughly 1 million. But here's the thing, that number is predicted to continue to grow exponentially. As we use more and more digital products, one of the biggest differentiators will be, you guessed it, the user experience. And you can play a part in it. Pretty neat, huh? Now that we've uncovered the what and the why, Let's speak about the how by diving into the UX process. When you're first starting a UX project, you do research on your users. You find out about them, who they are, what motivates them, as well as how they behave when they use your product or service. Then, you use the data you collect about your users to inform your strategy for your product. You create solutions around that strategy and then create usable prototypes or make changes to your product. Then you're done, right? LOL, nope. You always test your solutions by putting it in front of real users and see if your data-informed strategy was on the money or not. Finally, rinse and repeat. Our work as user experience professionals is iterative. Humans are complex beings. Since we're not robots programmed to behave a certain way, it's always good to keep testing and observing human behavior. Then again, that's why another name for UX is human-centered design. Phew! That was a chunk of info. You're doing great. Are you excited to get down and dirty with some user data? Does solving problems for humans influenced by humans feel like your true calling? Are you ready to make people smile whenever they use a product or service? If you answered yes to these questions, then join me. You are now an agent of UX.